So what's up guys? Question and answer session two for the love of tractors. Uh, Jason here and I was overwhelmed by the responses I got. I asked, I put it just on my Instagram. I didn't even do Facebook or YouTube or anything. I just put it on Instagram like, hey, send me questions for a question and answer video and you guys blew me away. So let's get right into it. Uh, let's see. Lance V23 says, what do you use for gravel? Okay, so that's simple and I wish I had a bottle here. I don't, I think I'm all out, but it is railroad ballast that you can find at pretty much any hobby store. Uh, even Hobby Lobby usually carries it. And I use either fine or medium ballast. And then I like to blend two colors. There, I, then there, there is even a blended um, bottle, but it's hard to find. It comes in these like, you know, kind of big plastic jug things. And um, the blend is hard to find, but I use white and gray and I mix them together. And then you put down your Elmer's glue. You know, you mix that in a spray bottle. And you know what? I'll do a video on this someday. Maybe. We'll see. This winter is getting jam-packed already. But anyway, you spray it down on your board. Um, then you sprinkle your gravel on there and uh, let it set up. And usually you're pretty good to go. Sometimes you have to go back through with another top coat of your glue and water mixture. But, you know, whatever. It works pretty good. So, all right. Sorry, I'm kind of going, trying to go fast because we got a lot of questions. I'm going to get through as many of them as I can. And if not, we'll do another part of this video uh, down the road. So, okay. Garrett Smith, 7140 says what is your favorite custom aha great question garrett um thanks for the question too by the way thanks for the question also lance so gotta be the panther or the case ih equivalent oops of the panther sorry doing that over my shoulder hard to do but anyway yeah it's it's gotta be one of those two for sure all right Next up, that's good. All right. Ah, Elk Creek Modeler says, when is the next new Holland 3D print coming out? Any day. <laughs> um, I have the 34 series and the uh, like early versatile, you know, the after new after versatile bought new Holland. I guess actually after Case IH bought new Holland, they sold off the four wheel drive line which was the, at the time, the 84 series, like, so, like, 93, 84, so on and so forth. And Versatile picked that up and started making their tractors. So, the 84 series New Holland and that very first Versatile series, and I'm blanking out on those letters, uh, the numbers on those right now, that will be here at my house any day. And so, of course, I'm going to paint those up as quickly as possible and show them off because I, I think they're going to be awesome. Uh, they're some of my favorite four-wheel drives of all time, if not my favorite four-wheel drive of all time and um you know be cool all right 21 colin smith says how did you get into 164 scale so i think uh probably the easy answer to that is you know just playing with them as a kid and i think that's probably how most of us got into them i could have definitely went either way because i had quite a few 116 scale and i say quite a few like probably 10 or 15 at the time when i was a kid but um as I got older, the 164 scale kind of appealed to me a little more because it was cheaper. You know, I was, you know, when I was in junior high, um, you know, you'd mow yards and you'd get like $10 for mowing a yard. <laughs> and so during the summer, and then that meant I could go to toy shows in the winter time and pick up tractors. And back then, like, um, oh, let's see, this is going to be custom. But bone stock, actually I have a bone stock one here somewhere now that I think about it. You know, so these 9400s came out. Actually, this is a 20 series, but they came out and they had triples on them and they were awesome. And um, anyway, is that behind? Eh, I've got one here somewhere. Anyway, um, you know, that was like eight bucks back in the day. <laughs> and so you could go to a toy show with, you know, a pocket full of money, you know, $40, $50, which was big money to a junior high kid back then. And come home with probably like 10 toys. It was awesome. So, uh, you know, versus you'd be lucky to get one 116 scale toy at that time. So anyway, that then, so that's kind of how I guess I got into it. And then once I um, started customizing, it was over. It was going to be 116 scale at that point. So, <laughs> all right. JCT Farm says, where do you get your parts? Okay, another pretty easy question. Um so I guess the first place is um, my Shapeways store, shapeways.com slash FTLOT. Um, 
sorry, shapeways.com slash shops slash FTLT. I'll put the link below. Uh, the second place would be CD Models. Uh, third place would be probably other people's Shapeway shops. There's a lot of really cool stuff out there right now. And the fourth place would be, uh, you know, bows and implements sometimes, although I've really had trouble with their items being back ordered, and then you wait forever to get them. I usually ordered something one time for them. I forgot I ordered it, and it showed up like a year later after, after it came off back order. Whatever. Hey, hang on one second, guys. I'm going to pause this video. I hope that answered your question, JCT Farms. All right. 164 scale farm toys and trucks says how to make handrails. So very simple. And I brought a couple examples here. Uh, the first thing I do, as you can see here, is, yeah, there you can see the handrails. I use straight pins. Straight pins are nice and thin and they bend really easy. Maybe need a set of needle nose pliers and that's it. And um, they work really well. So. I use those mostly. I have used some paper clips in the past if you can find the really thin ones, but they're hard to come by sometimes. So you can get um, this like plastic container full of straight pins at you know like Walmart, Hobby Lobby, um, Amazon.com. You can get like a thousand straight pins for five bucks or something ridiculously cheap. So uh, buy one of those. They will last you forever. In fact, uh, you know I do a lot of custom trackers. I think. Um, I think it was like four years between buying straight pins. <laughs> so they last forever. This That's a cheap way to do handrails. And I use them for other things too, like uh, connecting things that hinge and fold, like my field cultivators. Actually, I could show you because I'm working on one right now. See the straight pins there holding those hinges together? So there you go. That's how it's done. All right, so moving on to the next question 164 scale farm customs how do you paint and decal a tracker so we probably just need to do a whole video on that but um ideally you would strip the paint off disassemble the tracker then strip the paint off and um you know either with sandblasting or with the a chemical spray stuff that you buy or you know uh the, the stripper that comes in a jug uh, like a gallon jug at the farm store or whatever and put it in a bucket and do it that's probably ideal but you have to be careful with your plastic parts because some of that stuff will destroy your plastic parts so you want to make sure that's not on there and um you know so it's tricky and actually i just got to thinking you should check out rockin h's farm to, uh rockin h's toy trucks or i think it's just rockin h i'll put the link in youtube in below uh you should check out their youtube um, channel because he has a really good like comparison on stripping paint off trucks and the same process is for trackers so okay so first thing is to get it clean strip it out um, second step I prime I've heard a lot of guys say they don't I always do uh, I use depending on what I'm doing if I'm doing metal I'm using a self etching primer if I'm doing something that's uh, 3d printed and say uh, white strong and flexible material I will use a filler primer because it sands a little better and smooths out a little better and sometimes I just use a regular old um, primer depending on what I'm doing like on a plastic part or whatever so prime it get that good and covered then you just paint and uh, no secret to paint buy go get some rattle cans at your local dealership or your local farm store and go to town that's that's kind of what it boils down to when you paint get i like to have my part warm i like to have my can warm i like to have my room warm um light coats paint it you know several coats make sure it's good and covered let it sit for a couple of days don't get in a hurry because if you do uh, and you put your finger in that fresh paint you're starting over <laughs> if you got like a big fingerprint in there so that sucks done it before trust me okay next question is from john may 770 how to make cab glass? So that's another great question, and it's pretty easy. Uh, in fact, I use the plastic that comes in toy tractor boxes. So let's see, this fella right here. If you want that out of the box, you just cut your plastic, there's your windows. So of course, uh, you're gonna need to make some sort of template. You can use paper for that to like, so for example, in this John Deere, and I would sort of tra stick my paper up against the windows or, you know, the frame of the window, trace that, that gets you your shape, cut it out with some scissors and then, uh, put your template on top of your clear 
and just cut it in the shape you want. You can also measure and do it, especially if they're a regular shaped window, you know, square, whatever, rectangle. Um, and that works easily, but that's the way you do it. Now to put this in and so you don't haze up your windows, get some BSI Industries uh, super glue and get the gold label um, super glue. It's got, it, and I, I mean, it doesn't say gold label. It's just got a gold label on it and it doesn't uh, haze up your cab the glass it doesn't turn it white like other super glue will because if you use gorilla glue or uh loctite super glue or something like that it's going to haze your cab up and you're screwed so anyway all right last question because i am running out of time i got something uh, i got to go to attend here in a little bit how to get into shapeways tough last question so <laughs> not really so shapeways.com obviously um you're going to need a 3D design if you're wanting to sell on there. So you can do that yourself. The easiest way to do that yourself is Google SketchUp. Here's the trick. That's a really basic program. And I don't want to say it's limited in what you can do because most of my stuff is in SketchUp. So, and I, I feel like I've done some pretty nice stuff at this point. But um, it's certainly not as good as, say, like AutoCAD or, you know, one of the really high-end CAD program design things out there. So... So you have to get a file. Now, if you can't design yourself, hey, that's cool. You still got something done. Contact the designer. Now, you can find those on Shapeways, too. Just go to their forums. Uh, there's a whole section dedicated to looking for a designer. So, And you can hire them out. You're going to pay, let's call it, 40 to 100 bucks an hour for a designer. It's just the way it is. So um, it's, a, it's a good skill set. It's expensive to you know sort of master that it takes a lot of time if you will to master that so it's worth paying a guy if you don't know how to do it because um you know a, a good designer can make your life easy so you know that's that so then once you've got that file you're going to need it in a .stl format you simply just upload that to shapeways and um then you can set up your store go to town and uh you know if if it's good if you kind of promote it in the right places, you'll sell some, probably, make a little money. You know, you can you can mark up your price. So say Shapeways says um, it cost us 10 bucks to mark, you know, to, to print this item. Um, you can then set the price that it will retail for from them, say 30, you know, 30%, 50%, 100% markup. Uh, I personally shoot for a 30% markup on retail um, stuff. So meaning if someone um, is a dealer of mine if you will there's a couple guys that sort of have that access they get the wholesale price and then uh, the retail price meaning what you would pay on my store is 30 percent over that wholesale price so um, that way everybody's kind of happy it's not absorbent you know i know guys they're doing 50 100 200 percent markup that's cool that's their thing uh, i'm not complaining because I, the 3D printing thing is tricky, and there's a lot of time and effort into getting good stuff out there. So, like I said, I'm not going to you know, knock somebody if they want to do a 300% markup. That's their thing. <laughs> but I do 30%, just so you know. So, there you go. Go to my Shapeway store, and you can figure out what everything cost me at that point. So, All right. So, that kind of is part one of this list. I will get to more, uh, hopefully pretty quickly. And if you have more questions or want me to answer stuff or want something in more detail, just Put it below in the comments. I will be glad to get to it this winter. Um, you know, winter's setting in here. We're in the middle of December, so it's going to get cold soon. All right, guys. So this went a little long. I appreciate it if you stuck around. Let me know what you think below. Love to hear from you guys. Please give me the like and shares. Um, I don't know. It's just an ego thing. <laughs> anyway, you guys are the best. Thanks for watching. Have a great night.